literally receive something from outside in when we give our life to Christ. Well, let's look at the first example. Jesus told his disciples in Acts chapter 1, Wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. He told them, wait for something. Because you will, you shall be baptized. A few days later, they received, the Bible says, and suddenly there came <coughs> a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, don't, don't, don't miss the point. Jesus told them in chapter 1, wait for something. Don't go out yet. Don't go preaching. Don't waste your time. Wait until you receive something. You, John baptized you, but you shall be baptized. And on the day of Pentecost, we see they received something. Cloven tongues of fire came down and landed on them. Now, why did God do it in such a way? Yes, God wanted to show the people that were alive back then, the Jews that were crucified Christ and opposing him, that these are my disciples. Physical manifestation. But it is for you and me today to understand and to realize that these people received something from outside in. The scriptures is not just wasting ink, right? It's describing something, saying they received something from outside in, like tongues of fire came upon them. Now, some would like to say, and I think it was mentioned earlier today, that when you read the Word of God and believe it, by faith you activate the seed. The Word of God is the seed. And by faith you activate it. And when you activate it, you form this life of God. You produce this life of Christ from within. Have you heard this before? Well, I've heard it. And they base it on scripture. You know, Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. There you go, you receive words. And when you receive this word, and by faith you believe it, you activate it. And Well, you know what? Uh, did the disciples have the word of God? Amen. Did the disciples have the word of God? Yes. Did they believe it? Yes. Are you sure the disciples believed the word of God? Yes. But the scriptures tell me that Jesus told them, Wait. Because you don't have it yet. So here it is. If you produce this life of God from within by simply receiving the word and believing it, why didn't the disciples have this comforter before Pentecost? Did they not believe the word of God before? They read the word, they understood the word, they believed the word. They had faith, but they didn't have the comforter yet. This tells me that... Receiving the Spirit was dependent on the resurrection and glorification of Christ more than it was dependent on the disciples believing. Yes, you have to believe. You, know, you will not receive it if you don't believe. But by simply believing, reading the Word and believing did not allow them to receive the Holy Spirit prior to Pentecost. So something had to happen for this Holy Spirit to come upon them on Pentecost. Do you agree with me? And there's something that happened was outside of them. Something took place in the heavens above on the day of Pentecost. And as a result, the Holy Spirit descended and came upon them. Because they believed. Another example is in Acts chapter 19. <coughs> the Bible says, He, that's Paul, said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? He was walking and he met these 12 disciples, 12 believers. And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there is such a thing as Holy Ghost. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. These uh, believers had been baptized with the baptism of John. They were believers. They believed. They knew the word, and they believed it. But they did not have the Holy Ghost yet. They had to be baptized in the name of Jesus, and Paul had to lay hands upon them, and only then did they receive the Holy Spirit. So it wasn't something they produced from within by simply believing and activating the seed. No, it was something from outside in that came upon them. Amen? Amen. 
Even notice the language that Jesus uses <coughs> in John 16. He says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I go, I will send him unto you. And he, and he when he is come, will convict the world in respect of sin and so forth. This is not language used of something you produce from within. This is a language used of something that is sent from outside in. He put it in a way that you cannot misunderstand. In other words, before he is sent, regardless how much faith you have, regardless how much scripture you memorize, regardless how much scripture you interpret and prophesy, before the Holy Spirit was sent, you could not receive it. That's what the scripture says. I'm simply reading the verses. So to answer the question that we asked, yes, we do receive something from outside in called the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, and it was quoted earlier today, know ye not that ye are what? The temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. We, us, our bodies, is the temple of God. And God wants to come and inhabit this temple and dwell in us. That's not metaphorical, brothers and sisters. It is a reality. It is a reality that we rejoice in. 